Dobry miejscu, to się stawiają to, żeby blokować na miejscu. I właśnie od nie wiem, od czego to zależy. Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. Obviously by the title of this video you'll know that we are at Auschwitz. We're not really too sure how this video is going to go. Um, we are not 100% sure how much we can film, if we're even able to film. Uh, we're on the GoPro here. Um, I think it's a bit strange for us to be honest to, to do this type of video because as you, if you've watched some of our videos from Poland, they're kind of upbeat and lively and energetic I suppose, but uh, this is not really the place for that. So I think we're gonna just try and film as much as we can, show you a little glimpse of inside. Uh, we probably won't talk as much. Uh, we probably won't feel like talking, I suppose, being here. Uh, already we're just at the entrance and you can kind of feel it straight away, can't you? As soon as you kind of get here, it's just, it's a bit heavy. So, um, yeah, I mean, enjoy the video is probably not the right term, but uh, we'll, we're going to show you around anyway, and uh, we'll just see how it goes. It's very, very interesting to be here. Um, obviously a huge, huge part of history and to be in a place that has, is the setting really for the, the biggest mass murder in, in human history is, is bizarre, it's strange. But uh, yeah, like I said, we'll we'll just bring you with us around the um, concentration camp and just kind of give you a glimpse of what it's like here. Okay, so the tour that we are on is actually like a two-part tour. So the first bit, they bring you to Auschwitz one, and then uh, the second part is uh, Auschwitz-Birkenau. So we're finished in Auschwitz one, and uh, we're just walking back to the minibus, because I think it takes about four or five minutes to get to the other, uh, to Birkenau as well. So um, the first bit of the tour is, like I said earlier, it's just it's very, very heavy. Um, it's. I don't really know what to say about it, you it's just, there's I'm just lost a, bomb, words. Yeah, there's just a bombardment of of information that's so horrifying, yeah, it's, it's actually hard to kind of take it in, you know, and um, we filmed certain bits inside, some things I, I couldn't even look at, let alone film. Um, some things you weren't so, allowed to film. Yeah. Some things you weren't allowed to take pictures of, um, like they had, there was parts that you couldn't talk as well. Yeah, yeah, they had um, like the human hair, the clothes, children's clothes, things like that. Um, it's all very, it's all very, I don't even know the word to describe it, it's just so, so dreadful. Okay, so we are off the bus. It was only, like I said, about three or four minute drive um, to Birkenhill. 
is where we are now and um, we can see it kind of in the distance there and um, like i said the tour guide is excellent and she kind of goes through a lot of information and stuff and very informative and, and things like that and a lot of stuff that we kind of didn't know that mm -hmm. house was built in the tour it was actually like a detention center for uh, for prisoners um, and then it later became a concentration or a death camp in the early 40s and um, i think they said over 1. million people were killed nine nine hundred thousand of them of them were jews and then there was uh, also poles were killed as well and um romas and kind of just any anti-nazi activists and, and stuff like that as well so it was just a kind of a mix as well and it's just it's really really heavy i'm a little bit surprised by the the, the depth of it if you if you if you like obviously it's kind of i suppose i don't want to say famous but obviously like the the gas chambers and things like that but they did so much more and the, the torture that they um that they basically did to people and the uh, medical experiments i wasn't aware of that either that they had done um medical experiments especially on children so it's just a broad kind of it's just dreadful really the whole thing isn't it oh it's awful you can kind of see the the train tracks and the then train the distance that brought them right, right into, in. the, into the camp yeah this one is the larger of the two i think there's a few kind of i think there's over 40 maybe camps but auschwitz one and now Birkenhau is uh, are the two sort of notorious ones i guess as i said earlier this was a, a, a difficult video for us to make it's hard enough being here i think without making a video but trying to describe everything that's gone on here and the atmosphere and the feel of it is is hard you know it's hard to kind of sum it up um we're doing our best <laughs> it's it, like i said it's difficult um we're a little bit numb would that be the feeling that you describe walking through that yeah it's mad like we watched schindler's lists and obviously you know it gives you the story and it's an awful film to watch yeah. and uh, a must watch as well like you yeah. know but um when you're actually here it's different it's isn't different, it yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah it is different i mean there's a we watch the film like it's interesting that's the i hope that's the right word because it's obviously a huge huge part of history and to be here is you know it is interesting but at the same time i don't think we were prepared for no. i don't think you could prepare for it to be honest with you to, to be here and to see it all and it's just it's just strange okay yeah so this is probably what you think of is it when you come to auschwitz just that setting there just, yeah, literally that the barbed wire the red the brick the red brick buildings the train tracks the colds the weather and everything like yeah it's, there's actually snow I here know. as well it's freezing. it's freezing cold it's just it's eerie it's eerie yeah it's that's very, the whole it's eerie. atmosphere of the place isn't yeah. it So yeah, our guide was just telling us now that we're at uh, Auschwitz uh, Birkenau that this place was actually purposely chosen because of its uh, of the conditions. She actually said that it was a bit different even to Auschwitz one where we were a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. that the climate was different. She said it, here it would be usually like the wind, wind would cut, cut it. She it said, yeah. Actually today it's. She said Very she's surprised today, that it's yeah. uh, that it's calm today, but usually it, that the wind would just make it even even worse, you know. And uh, so they actually deliberately placed this camp here due to its uh, its terrible conditions. Mm -hmm. you hear what she said there about the grass. I know, yeah, they, they're that. literally just cut, and basically there's no floor in them, and it was just complete mud in the inside yeah. and then the outside like they even built just the, the level of detail they even built clay underneath so that when it would rain or water from the river or whatever it was it could never sink so it was muddy all the time it was deliberate mm -hmm. to make it wet cold damp the grass that we can see here behind us that wasn't there and um, there's trees in the distance as well there there's also stables over there as well yeah. that were supposed to be for save us for horses for horses but, but they weren't for used for people, people. Like. the trees and um, they weren't here at the time absolutely no color that's what she said it was all about you know muck kind of red brick buildings just that kind of gloomy sort of way of not being it's just it's crazy she also said so the trains that came in and um, took about seven to eight thousand people daily okay. is what they could hold up yeah. to and then i think that there, there was a, at least 300 people put into like into those cabins into the cabins and stuff yeah 
and they were squashed into bunk beds she said like eight maybe to a bunk bed yeah, yeah. and uh, there was no the way a bunk bed would be um you know wood wood and then the bottom was literally yeah. just nothing just it was just mud and yeah, and a swamp, a swamp basically yeah. that people had to just sleep on This is really eerie, this bit, isn't it? Yeah, it really is, yeah. This is what I was saying about the bunks, like, so I think they used to squeeze like eight mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And then there was no, it was just ground. That was a w women's camp, was it? I think all it was this, all women all in there. All women, yeah. Because they were split up. It was obviously women, kids, men, split up by. And that Greece. was, do you know? Yeah, they they split them up as well. She said something. To, it was to do with the showers. She said that it was to let people let them think that it was okay, like you know, because men and women wouldn't show all that sort of stuff. So it was like, yeah, we'll separate the women, we'll separate the men, separate the kids, so we all have you know our own showers and stuff like that. And it's just it's non-stop, like. Several people, there were a few pilots uh, who were caught after one of the bombings of Monovi. Do you remember Monovi, the department? It was bombed in 1944. Yeah, she's actually a really good guide. Um, we were listening to a headset on the last in camp the, that we were in. One, we were on a headset, we yeah. We were on a headset, so it was sort of cutting in and out of you were like a bit behind the group, but here now there's not, and it's just like... You can hear her, like, straight away. Straight away, but she's yeah. like, even when she's explaining it, she gets so... Into it. Into it. She does like, get into it. Do you notice how, feeling. as the tour's gone on, she's gotten more, I don't want to say aggressive, but you can see how. You can how see it in her she's, when she's talking about and it, how stuff, annoyed, yeah, and she's giving me the her, feeling yeah. of like, yeah, you know, yeah. can you imagine like if it was, know, yeah. you know, and it's like really. She's excellent. She's brilliant, isn't she? Yeah, yeah given the whole yeah. story behind it. She's, she is, she's brilliant. Mm. I'm actually wearing, you don't have to wear your mask around, but it's so cold <laughs> that it's actually keeping my face, face warm. warm. Yeah. It's freezing, isn't and it? And that's the thing as well. It's like me and Samantha were just talking. Like the, the the guide was telling us that all of these um all of these camps, you know, they're, they're not heated at all and just terrible conditions. And there's me and you walking around and that's we're freezing. What it's it's just, crazy. It's unimaginable to think of to how think they of were what feeling. went on here. Yeah, it you know? really is, isn't it's it? Unimaginable, yeah. the stories that she's getting into and telling no, us that yeah. you'd never have known. It's, it's just, just crazy. Like, yeah. This right here is the remains of the crematorium so when when the soviets were getting here the germans had to destroy everything and they burnt they burnt all the uh, the evidence basically the evidence, yeah. two thousand people a day she said could be killed in this Another kind of interesting part of the tour as well, I just asked her a question, I said, had Hitler ever visited here? And she said, no. No, he didn't even sign any documentation. No documentation, anything. he didn't visit here, and it was all basically a cover-up, and as she said, she kind of got aggressive, well, not aggressive, but annoyed. Yeah. She said that, uh, you know, later on, a lot of his supporters and stuff saying he was innocent, he didn't know he, anything he about didn't it. He have a clue about all that sort he of was stuff, the head but, of the whole thing. Yeah. Like. But, um, but yeah, it's just, it's interesting. I did wonder whether or not he had come out and seen this. But uh, she said no, that he had never, he had never visited here. It's massive, isn't it? It's so big. It's, it's such a huge. weird feeling to walk around it. I, yeah. I actually can't describe it. It's just barbed wire. It's just... Yeah. 
land it's just it's relentless that's kind of one way of describing it i think um listening to our guide and she's kind of gone into in depth into what went on and it's like it's relentless seems to be the word it's like the worst possible things that humans could do to other humans is basically has happened here bad torture that you can think of yeah yeah happened yeah here. and it's like it's it, like I said, it's relentless because she's you're hearing something and it's like so dreadful, and then she just tops it with something else and then something else and then you something else and it's just you just think it can't get any like... worse and it's like it does and like she said there about the the prisoners, the Nazis would give them postcards to send off to their families but they wouldn't date them, and then they'd be executed, and then they would actually send the postcards off to their families with. With different dates. new dates and stuff like that it was just it's just any sort of like just to say to the six, families that they're all right and everything is yeah, okay and they're it's just like the mental torture physical torture it's just every every bit of it is covered here like it's just it's beyond belief really So we've just finished the tour. You can kind of see behind me, that's the kind of infamous shot with the train tracks going right into Birkenau. Uh, she was talking a bit then towards the end about the liberation of it and how uh, it was a thing called a death march. So basically, I think it was 10 days before the Soviets got here, the Germans, the Nazis wanted to uh, basically get rid of everybody. So they forced them basically to, to march. Uh, some of them were, well, all of them malnourished, walked to the bone. Um, barely wearing any clothes, cold conditions. Um, the march continued to other uh, camps in, in, in the surrounding areas, I suppose. Anyone who wasn't able to march was shot. They were just left on the side of the streets. And uh, she also said something pretty interesting. Uh, she said it was impossible to actually get the exact number of people who survived here. Uh, she said that a lot of them are um, elderly now. They said it would have been kids in there and now they're, they're older now and um, they just won't talk about it. They just she did say there's a handful of people that um, still keep, keep in, in touch, touch with, with the, the museum. museum. Yeah, yeah. But she said a large, she, she thinks anyway, a large number of people because they just won't talk about it. And she even mentioned about some in America where she said they don't even tell their grandkids or their great grandkids uh, about their past, their history, and things like that. You know where they came from, what they had to go through. So uh, that's like what she they said. They would have been only kids. Yeah, at the, the time, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so she said that's kind of impossible to know the exact number of people who survived here.
day. Oh, what a day, is it? So yeah, we're home now, and um, back in our hotel. Um, if you're sorry, if you're wondering why the hotel looks a bit different, it's oh, because yeah. we actually had to move from our last place because they didn't have tickets for Auschwitz until today, and we were actually meant to leave this morning, so we had to actually we ended up having to extend an extra, an extra, night. extra night. And yeah. then luckily, actually, the ticket office that we went to to buy the tickets. Um, the guy that sort of he ran it or worked there yeah, or whatever. Yeah. He we told him our situation and he said, You know what, I have actually have an apartment. Have an apartment. He said, Do you want to come around and it. view it? It's literally around the corner. I know, yeah, so we he brought us around, around and viewed and we, it and uh, it yeah, we took perfect. it. it perfect, yeah. so, Crackville uh, Tours is the name of of that company. So yeah. if you're looking to do a tour of Auschwitz or I think they do other tours as well. They do a lot of tours, yeah. yeah we leave it in the description them. below, the link mm -hmm. and um yeah, we definitely recommend to book your tour in advance. Yeah, yeah. Because um we actually there was a few people in the queue when we were there yeah. and they were looking to try buy tickets at the door mm -hmm. and they were all sold out. So yeah. if you so. I would definitely have that um organised your tickets, yeah. which I'm sure a lot of people do anyway. Yeah. Um if you're booking it with a tour you'll get dropped there and then dropped back yeah so it's but, all it's handy it's all looked after you don't have to worry it's about all looked after there all yeah if you have a car you, know. you can drive there's parking out there yeah. and everything but like that just book your tickets in yeah. advance also when you book with uh, a tour company then they are going to give you a guide and uh, we got an english speaking guide which is great and she was um she was brilliant because we have turned up to places before and done things kind of off our own back without a guide and some and sometimes it's better to get one I think especially yeah, the guide for something makes, like that. makes the difference I think you yeah. have to do a switch with a guide though. oh do you you do have to oh, do it with okay, a guide right. I don't think as far as I know you can't just rock walk up and just walk, walk around, and walk ah, around okay, it. I think right, okay, it's yeah. all run by different guides like ah, okay, and obviously yeah, different languages yeah, and yeah. whatever else but so, she was um, she was brilliant and she kind of made uh, the experience um, better you know because she has obviously the knowledge of everything yes, that goes on did, there yeah. and uh, like we were kind of saying in the vlog it's such a bombardment of information it was hard for us to kind of i suppose listen to her and then repeat back to the vlog and the, the vlog to be honest wasn't never going to be about that it wasn't we actually thought We'd, about not doing it yeah we didn't actually then, do this vlog for entertainment it was more just education to give, or anything it was just give to you show an insight of what the camps are actually like like yeah, yeah and exactly. like that we would recommend that if you're in krakow it's something that you should do um, it's devastating to see mm. and it's actually surreal that this actually happened but yeah. um yeah no it's something that you should go you should and do. definitely go and see that's what the guide said she said if um you should go at least once in your life to check it out so i mean we did it we do feel a bit we kind of expected it because we had read and watched videos of people who have went and they we said done usually, a bit of research on it, usually yeah. when you're finished with it it's just because it's so heavy you're just a bit like it's like the bus Ugh. on the way out is going to be you know yeah yeah and you can actually people see are talking and then on the way back it was actually you know the cold got onto people yeah as well, yeah but you could tired, see but... what was going on with our group as well as the day was going on because you know she's telling you this information from the beginning and everyone is just like okay but then you could you could hear like the the grunts and the groans from people people were getting actually yeah. more un unsettled upset with the more information that we were getting, you know, and as I said to you, kind of uh, in the in the thing, every time our guide stopped, I was like, "Oh, here we go. This is going to be something new, something extra." It's and devastating more, just to, to you know? hear it all, and just just the fact that it actually happened is just yeah. really it gets is. me. It's like it's yeah. it's crazy. And but... being there is 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 close to it as you can possibly. Oh yeah, you know, being we, there. You were is... talking about the film. Uh, Schindler's List and stuff they give you a kind of a insight of course I know it, I mentioned Schindler's List and then obviously I did say The Boy in the Striped Pajamas but I was just saying um, it's just you know when you watch these films and you see the barbed wires and yeah, the camps yeah, yeah. and everything else it's like you're there at it and it's just mm. it's completely different obviously than watching the film when you're there you really do feel it yeah you do feel it yeah it's yeah. It's it was a, it was a strange video for us to do because like I said at the beginning all our, of our videos are kind of I suppose you know positive and upbeat and kind of we just like to have fun and video it that's essentially what our channel is but but uh it was something that we something both different. wanted to do we yeah, wanted anyway. to visit anyway so mm. we just wanted to see how it would go to film yeah. it and as we said like that it wasn't a, a video for entertainment it was just like more that, yeah. to like yeah give you an insight of what the exactly, camps are like yeah. so but that's uh that's it we're going to close the video off here we're going to pack we actually on a bright note we leave yes. crack off tomorrow we go to zakopane really which we've been for... excited since we landed in poland we just heard so many good things from yeah, people we actually in the planned to leave this for the for the end of our trip 
because we were hoping for snow and I think we've been looking up and there is snow there. is there, snow there, so, so fingers crossed we can get Zakopane to have got good snow. We might we're be hoping to, to get skiing, we we're hoping. Know. Maybe we talked to a few people, so maybe by the end of it. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. don't know, we'll we see. Know. But we'll see. But so anyway, all the videos uh, that you're going to see from now on will come from Zakopane. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, if you're interested in seeing the videos that we've done before, um, you know, subscribe to the channel. There's a Polish playlist as well. Um, also, if you're interested in the videos that are to come from Zakopane, also please subscribe to the channel. You can follow us on Instagram at GoTimeTravels, and we'll see you in Zakopane. We'll see you in Zakopane.